2K Sports checks in with our loyal viewers with a broadcast from Utah, downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, the home of the Jazz. Alongside Chris Weber and Greg Anthony, I'm Kevin Harlan, the fourth member of our crew. From the sideline, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, it was the Charlotte Hornets winning their last game against the Pistons. And what really made that outcome a surprise was how lopsided it was. Yeah, and fortunately for them, I, I thought the opponent's defense just never showed up. Oh, but I like that they attacked those weaknesses. They made them pay for a lackluster effort. And it's going to be the Jazz off the tip. And the NBA season can be a long one, Chris. How important were team functions and team events during the season as a way to, to relieve some of the stress of the season? Oh, man, if you're on a good team uh, and a good team in the locker room, then you really don't even have to have team functions because you have to play golf on warm days. It's just natural, right? Yeah, it's just natural. You're eating with guys, hanging out with guys, and so it, it is everything because really these are the guys that you're playing for, and the better chemistry, the better the team I've always believed, and so team functions, hanging out with the guys, always important. So let's take a look at the Charlotte starting lineup. Al Farouk Amino is out there with Kaminsky. Then there's Kemba Walker. Then there's Batum. And it's Jordan in at the shooting guard position. Three on three. And the dunk by Jordan. And guys got careless with the ball there. And the turnover leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. And how about the explosiveness he shows going from the offensive to the defensive end in a blink? Now, here's Rubio. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. Beasley outside. And it's Hood in the corner. And they will call over the back on the play. And gets physical on the boards and just really pays for it with the over the back call. I'd like to see him use his head a little more than his body for the rest of the game. Don't get caught out of position in, in the first place. Here's Jordan. Utah with the rebound. Their last game, a win against San Antonio, looking to carry that into this one. And this is why scouting is so important. You've got to be able to identify those role players who can complement what your team does. Yeah, that was big-time production from the bench, especially on the offensive end. Here's Jordan. Michael Beasley picking up that last basket. Outside Jordan. Nice pass in here by Charlotte Kaminsky. Gobert with the block. And so the ball out of bounds. Gobert touched it last. Now about two minutes gone here in the first quarter. From D. Off one for one with that shot. And Walker is what we call thirsty. He's thinking of firing as soon as he gets the rock. Great presence of mind from the point guard. Now here's Beasley. Turned in an outstanding game against San Antonio. And the shot goes in from Rudy Gobert. Yeah, good awareness there. He sees an opening and doesn't hesitate. Opening right there, that's just because the defense failed to rotate. Hood against Jordan. Dishes it to Aminu over Beasley. Aminu with the bucket. And I like how he draws the attention on the inside and then the nice little kick out in rhythm for the jumper. Gobert, the screen. Good on the wing. Misses, and he wants possession off, but the shot's off target with nobody near. No good from Jordan. Jazz trail by three. For so long, the Hornets have been one of the most disciplined teams, Greg, in the NBA. Yeah, you look at how this team takes care of the ball, and from the first guy to the last, it, it says something about how much pride they take in that. Minimizing turnovers goes a long way in terms of winning games. It's been a part of the basketball culture with the Hornets for quite some time. And here is Jordan. Michael Beasley getting it to go from deep. From past the arc, and it's Jordan. That time on the assist by Walker. Seven points for Jordan. Oh, man, just an outstanding first quarter so far for him. He's doing a great job creating space and knocking down open looks. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jazz. 
this their first chance this season playing Charlotte. And last season, they made short work of this club. Two games, two wins. Yeah, they really controlled the pace on both nights, which is probably why they made the playoffs. And the other team was left on the outside looking in. Here's what Utah is going with right now. Pachulia, he's checked in for Beasley. Burks comes in for Joe Ingles. Mitchell, he's checked in for Hood. And it's Dante Exum in for Ricky Rubio. 109 left in the first quarter. Jordan kicks to Kaminsky. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Jordan. Jordan's got three assists in the game. And there's the pass to Gobert. Gobert, the screen. Here's Exum. And Utah, another three. Uh, okay. We got a nice little back and forth going here. And I love it, Greg. Both sides inflicting damage from the perimeter. We'll see how the defense is adjusted. They blow the whistle just as he gets it off. That's two points with a chance for another one at the stripe. Charlotte shooting their first free throw attempt on the night. There's 39 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Pass to Pachulia. Inside. They set the pick. Gobert the pass to Burks. Pachulia dishes to Mitchell. Just five on the clock. From 13, Jordan with the rebound. Charlotte leading by three. Banked in off the glass. Jordan's got 12. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. Yeah, but here's the problem. They play team ball. So if you pay him too much attention, that just leaves other guys open and it's too difficult of an adjustment to make. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. And before the game, we heard from Kemba Walker. He talked about his mentality when he steps out onto the floor. Play free. You know, just play like playing street ball. Just have fun. Just play the game that you've been playing, you know, forever. Infectious enthusiasm. You see, and the Jazz making a change here. Beasley's checked in. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Jordan, he's checked in for Zeller. Beasley is out there with Alec Burks. Then there's Pachulia. Then it's Exum, and it's Mitchell in at the two spot. That's the group right now for Utah. For Charlotte, they have shot just one free throw earlier, one for one in the game. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. Free throw good, Jordan. And here's Exum. He's usually able to provide some lift to his team, averaging six points a game. Mitchell kicks to Beasley. Nice ball movement by Utah. Beasley the screen. Back to Exum. With some arc, and he lays it up and in. Five points in the game. Oh, the floor is a tough shot, even when you're that close to the bucket. Here's Jordan. Another shot. He knocks it down, but wait a minute. The officials are getting together. They may want to review this one. And we are not going to halftime just yet. Officials signaling they are going to review the tape. And a chance here to, to just double-check the ruling on the floor. I wasn't sure if he got it off in time or not, so I, I appreciate the second look as well.
And it looks like they got it right this time. No basket. The clock had expired while the ball was still in his hands. Yeah, and even if they don't show it, I know the refs are proud of themselves after a replay proves them right. They're like, see, we had it right all along. So good call, fellas. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. The Hornets on top. They lead by five. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Now, you have scored very efficiently in the first half. So what has the mindset been? D.A., my mindset is the same I've had my whole life, baby. Any shot I take is a good shot. Actually, hold up. Check that. Check that. Any shot I take is the best shot. Thanks so much, David. And we'll step away briefly, but get you right back out here for the start of the third quarter after this break. And it's been a back and forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. And Mr. Incredible has been sensational. His points production thus far off the charts. It's only been two quarters. Just a great effort for him for the entire half. Yeah, right. I mean, the defense hasn't had an answer for this guy yet. Just too skilled, too driven thus far. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the second half of basketball. On the court for the Hornets. Batuma's out there with Aminu. Then it's Jordan. Then it's Kaminsky. And it's Walker in at the one spot. And of course, NBA players have all reached this pinnacle through dedication, through very hard work. Chris, can you talk about the hard work and effort that, that goes into playing and succeeding at this NBA level? Well, if, if you're in high school or, or middle school, when your friends are uh, at, at the movies, you're on the basketball court. When your friends are hanging out at a party, you're at the basketball court. When your friends and his family are on vacation, you're at the basketball court. I don't think uh, many people understand the dedication. You know, for many guys, it's more than four hours a day in the gym. And a lot of that is just sitting in the gym, just smelling the gym. You know, of course you're going to work out, of course you're going to shoot, but it's everything basketball. You know, in my wall, I had Dominique, Magic, Bird. I had all these guys, Isaiah. Uh, for cut out magazines and I would put their pictures on my wall and work out and do push-ups looking at them and no I would kidding. know I would know their moves I would know everything you know I remember Kenny Smith after his dunk contest he stood at the free throw line and threw the ball between his legs threw it off the backboard and dunk I went in the backyard in Detroit shoveled the snow and we worked on that dunk all night freezing. <laughs> I mean, you have to love it. So, you know, when you love something, my father taught me it's not work. Oh. And so uh, you got to start with the love and uh, then all the other work and dedication is just is just part of the journey. I love the message, but boy, I like that Kenny Smith story. That is that is a great, great story. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Thanks, Kevin. Mr. Incredible in their last matchup against the Pistons was outstanding. He had 41 points, and he was a target from everywhere, hitting from deep as well as making his free throws. He put up numbers that really jumped out in the box score, a very solid performance. And Kevin, we'll see what he's got in his arsenal tonight. All right, David, thank you, guys. Could you believe that performance? Wow. I mean, it was really something to see. I mean, he showed everybody just how special he is when he is on his game. Oh, yeah. Once he got them on the ropes, he never let them off the hook. It was full-speed energy basketball at his greatest. And Rubio kicks to Gobert. Kicks it out to Rubio. It's stolen by Kaminsky. Okay, time now for an injury report. He told me that, in his opinion, the injury does not appear to be too serious. We're well into this season, and that is the last thing this team needed. And that's going to make things much harder for them down the road. Kevin? All right, David, thanks for checking in and letting us know how he's doing. And let's just hope that he doesn't have any setbacks during his recovery. Fingers crossed, and hopefully it's nothing but good news from now on when David gives us updates on him. Shot clock at six. Beasley with a screen on Jordan. Here's Hood. The pick gave him all the room he needed, and he knocks down the chain. Hood's got nine. And that's what you give up when you don't fight over the screen. 
A lot of times your defense is your offense, your offense is your defense. This is poor decision making right here. You can't let them have that shot. Also might have been a lack of effort. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group here. Pachulia, he's checked in for Beasley. Alec Burks comes in for Joe Ingles. Mitchell, he's checked in for Rodney Hood. And Ian Clark subbed in for Ricky Rubio. So an almost entirely new group in now for Charlotte. Zeller, he's checked in for Frank Kaminsky. Michael Kid gilgris comes in for Al Farouk Aminu. Monks checked in for Nicholas Batum. And it's Matthew Delavidova in for Walker. Well, yeah, Steve Clifford has done an amazing job here with the Hornets. One of the most underrated coaches in the league right now and a big part of the Hornets' success. He's done a great job at maximizing the talents of his team. Good on the shot, and with that, the Charlotte lead is cut down to just six points with the basket from Clark. Now here's Jordan. He's tightly guarded. We've gone about three and a half minutes into the third now. The shot will not fall. Now the Jazz take it the other way. And with Steve Clifford, you wouldn't be surprised if he won a Coach of the Year award in the future. Chris, his peers around the league admire what he's been able to do. Well, and the fact that the Hornets have been a perennial playoff threat under him is huge. For a long time before Clifford, the, the Hornets couldn't string together winning seasons. The change from then to now under his watch has been huge. Gobert with the block. And now Utah, fast break. Here's Mitchell, and he drops in the layup off the glass. And now just a two-point Hornets lead. And that's what he does. I mean, he is a bucket getter. And it's in there. And now it's 27 points. It's going to get even bigger if he keeps this up. Clock management, this is where they can get a two-for-one. And, Kevin, every opportunity counts. They set the screen. Here's Pachulia. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. And really the defense fouling there to, to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. The Jazz shooting their first free throws of the night right here. Dante Exum, he's checked in for Utah. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Ogden's checked in. Shot and game clock separated by five. Jordan kicks to Brogdon. It's Kid Gilchrist on the wing. Back to Jordan. Charlotte moving the ball around. There's the three. Here's Zeller. Second chance shot. No good at the rim. ...to convert very often. And we'll be right back after this. And now let's take a listen on head coach Steve Clifford. Well, we're doing well. Great job. Show your hands. Show your hands. Don't foul. Moments ago, Steve Clifford talking about defensive technique. Doesn't want to give up three points at the charity line. And, and by focusing in on the smallest thing, his guys know how serious he is. One of the better defensive coaches in our league. Welcome back as we get rolling once more. The fourth quarter right ahead in what's been a very well-contested game. We've got Alec Burks. Exum is out there with Mitchell. Then there's Beasley, and it's Gobert in at the five, roaming the paint. That's the five on the floor for the Jazz. Jordan with the bucket. That's the awareness that Kid Gilchrist has out there. Excellent at knowing where the open man is. And they call an illegal screen here. That's great. And as we check out this year's contenders for the dunk contest, we get a look at some of the showmen, the best showmen in the NBA. And with the names on that list, you know we're going to have a crazy competition this year. We take a look at Jordan, and it doesn't look like he'll make it into the field this year. But still an honor to see your name up there among all those other great players. Yeah, look, no doubt he's one of the more exciting players in our league. And, and maybe next year he'll Shots pull good. in a it, few more votes. And as always, we'll keep the updates coming in as we get closer to All-Star Weekend. One thing we already know, 
there are some great players pulling in votes so far. Yeah, and I think it's safe to say that this is going to be one of those dunk contests that everybody's going to be tuning into. And Utah making a change here. Ingles is checked in. And then for Charlotte, Kaminsky is checked in for Cody Zeller. Aminu comes in for Monk. And Walker subbed in for Brogdon. And Zoe hits the technical free throw. Ricky Rubio checked in for Mitchell. Nicholas Batum, he's checked in for Charlotte. Ingles, and there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. And that is a foul. It's on the Charlotte Hornets. He doesn't get the second one. Charlotte leading by five. Walker the pass to Aminu. Outside Jordan. And count it. He'll head to the line with a chance to make it three. He continues to be their go-to guy. If they close this game out, his stamp will be all over this win. the free throw no good jazz trail by seven rubio outside he feeds it to gobert it's stolen by kaminsky and nicholas batum the bucket on the assist by kaminsky and defensively they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside Walker against Rubio. Kicks it to Beasley. Over Aminu. No good from Beasley. Something affected him on that shot, and it wasn't the defense. And now it's a double-digit lead. And now it's an 11-point Charlotte lead. And we hear so much about this being the era of point guards, but you look at the crop of small forwards in the league today. Wow, what a lineup. And, and talk about versatility. There are a lot of good ones out there. Yeah, the NBA has changed a lot. The, the two guard used to be the most athletic position when you think about it with the mm -hmm. Jordans, the Clyde Drexlers, other guys. But it's really changed. And really look at the size. Kevin Durant, you know, I, I was always amazed. I'm a power forward at 6'9". He's two inches taller than me, and he can play the point guard. So the game is evolving when you look at Kevin Durant. Durant, LeBron, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Anthony Kupo, Jimmy Butler, those type of guys. But you want to talk about versatility playing uh, both ends of the floor and being able to score and get buckets, uh, these guys come to mind. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Hey, Kevin. Well, during the last break, I heard Quinn Snyder talking with his team. He was begging them to step it up. He said, we've got to make the move now. Or we're going to be out of time and out of luck. Give it everything you've got out there. Kevin? Charlotte leading by nine. Feeds it to Jordan. It's not going to go for him. Excellent deed there from Beasley. Jazz shooting an efficient 53% from the field. And Rubio kicks to Beasley. It's stolen by Aminu. Left side Walker. Three-pointer. And again, the Hornets missing. For the Jazz, this one's not looking good. Ingles dishes to Rubio. Here's Beasley, and he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. You love it when a big man has those soft hands. Rarely any problem converting that close to the rim. We're in the final quarter of play here. Three minutes in. Here's Kaminsky. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Jordan. And that's now seven points for Frank Kaminsky. Outside Hood. Passes it to Ingles. Gobert, the screen. And that's going to be too many steps. Gets the whistle on the travel. Yeah, you don't see those over and back calls too often because they're just so easy to avoid. That was all on them, Greg. I mean, that's a free possession they just gave up. A nice shot by Jordan. Just amazing work from Walker. Really zipping the rock fast to the wide open man. Jazz trail by 10. There's a good screen. 
Ingles against Batu. Gobert the screen. Ingles kicks to Beasley. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Beasley's got five points in the quarter. Oh, look at the soft touch on the teardrop. Here's Jordan. Nice concentration to hit the double clutch layup. And the Hornets lead by 10. Well, that's how you make a quick move. You got to get the defender to bite. That's layup central right there. Jazz have gone two of four from the field since we started the final quarter of play. Easily up top. He's covered. It's down. This is going to end up as a solid victory here for Charlotte. Look at their number of assists. You know, they didn't get stuck in those one-on-one -on -one situations, and, and they got the ball to the guys with the best matchups. Easy drives, open jumpers, and great ball movement. And so this will now translate to 14 wins on the season. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game oh, season series, two and they'll be going two for the shots. sweep the next time they face off. And, you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Jordan. From an offensive standpoint, he was their leader tonight. Whenever they needed a big bucket, he was always the guy to come up with. Free throw good, Jordan. So Jordan nails both of them. Jazz trail by 12. 58 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Beasley. Hornets with the rebound. Allowing no space for the shooter to get comfortable. Just terrific defense. Yeah, that won't go on the stat sheet. Close to getting the block, but really, it had the same effect. And how much longer are they going to keep that foot on the accelerator? At this point, it's just icing on the cake. Terrific run, closes it out. Deflects the pass. It's stolen by Aminu. Here's Jordan. And yep, Jordan. finally drops after rolling around the rim. Jordan's got 41. Tremendous effort here on the road. That plane ride home is going to be sweet. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't care how good you are. It's tough to succeed in a hostile environment. They're doing it in style. About three seconds between shot and game clock. Six on the shot clock. Here's Hood. Nails the 16-footer. His in-between game, always a work in progress, but the D still can't just leave him all by himself right there. So no problem for Charlotte as they get the win. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, gee, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And that about wraps it up for David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Chris Weber. This is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Char. Am I blowing up? <laughs> You're trending. Oh, hey, we need to go do an interview with the guys in the studio. Let's All go. Right. Let's get it, man. Hey, what's up? It's the Jet. You were dropping dimes left and right out there. Now, how were you able to rack up so many assists against their defense? Kenny, when I have the ball, the defense automatically shifts to what I'm doing. I mean, that's just the kind of gravity my game has on the floor. You know, once the defense starts watching me and I catch them napping, I'll get an easy hoop for my teammates because, you know, I'm all about team basketball. Yeah, you're out of space, man. Yeah.